Well, you have four components, I yes. guess you would call them, to natural health. You want to go through those? I would. Um, I'd like to say that naturopathic medicine, we try to go back to nature as much, much as possible. And I consider myself an herbalist as much as a naturopath okay. because I really learn and love learning about plants. But when it, we work in complement to traditional Western medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some people who are, are just alternative. They only do natural things. But I believe that God gave us the ability to have drugs for a reason. There are certain things that you do need drugs in, in medicine. Mm -hmm. And if I'm hit by a bus, don't give me an apple, please take me to the ER. Mm -hmm. So we have to work together. And I find particularly in maybe cancer cases where I'll work with a doctor who will be doing traditional treatments and I will help build the immune system up so the person can get well afterwards. It makes a lot of sense. So we're, we're complementing. But we use an ABCD process, which keeps it really simple for people. And the first thing, which I find is the most important, and if we don't do this, the rest do not work, is that you must affirm your faith yeah. and that will activate the healing response. Mm -hmm. We know that God is the healer mm -hmm. and um, we have to do our part. And for me, the story of the 10 lepers always helps me better understand this. And we know this is the group of 10 and only one came back to thank Christ. But they came to see Christ and he could, he's all powerful God, he could have healed him right at that moment and you know, you will be healed. But instead he's, he told these lepers, he says, go show yourself to the priest. So the, the lepers had to turn and on their way to the priest, they were healed. So it was by faith. So I think that tells us a lot about the expectations that God Christ has expected for us. We have to believe that he is the healer and do what he tells us to do, which is to take good care of our health. We're his temple. And so he has given us these herbs and natural things that we need to do for that. So we have to affirm our faith. And if we do that and believe that God's the healer, we will be better. The next is a positive attitude. If you wake up in the morning, and you say, I'm gonna be sick you are sick. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we are have a good positive attitude. Proverbs tells us a cheerful heart is good medicine. Mm -hmm. So when the happier people are the healthier people, mm -hmm. people, you must, you know, so if you keep that in mind. But the big one is stress. 90% of all illness is caused by anxiety, worry, I and stress. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a faith issue. Mm -hmm. And when someone comes to my office and I see this anxiety, they don't leave without a devotional. Oh. And so my first tool is not an herb. It is a devotional book that will help you be in the word every day. Right. And if you that's will great. do this, um, you, will, you will feel better and you will get healthy. Yeah. So stop the worry, stop the anxiety. Who's in control here? Obviously not you because what you've been doing isn't working and it makes you sick. Right. So stress control through faith is really important. And then finally, rest and relaxation. And God gave us the best example possible. He created the, the world in six days and then he rested. Now, I don't think that God needed a day of rest. What I think God needed was to show us. It's okay. It's okay. That this is as an example of how we should lead our lives is that we need rest. We're a sleep deprived uh, nation. We don't take our vacation days. We push ourselves to the limit and I'm guilty as anyone. There's just so much I want to do and accomplish, but we need to take the time to let our bodies heal. And it only does that when we rest. Mm -hmm. So that's A, affirming our faith to activate our healing response. <clears throat> The next one is building your immune system, and we've been talking a lot about building the immune system for cold and flu season. And there are about four things that you really need to be aware of that will help your immune system. And the first is hydration. Um, most people are not uh, drinking enough fluids, mm -hmm. and without enough fluids, your body dehydrates, and then you feel tired and you get sick. So uh, the ideal is you take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's how many ounces of fluid you should drink. And that's non-caffeine fluids. So that's, that's juices and drinks, but not coffee or Cokes. These are things that do not have caffeine. Or high sugar Or juices. high sugar. Too. Then you need whole foods, which seems like a no-brainer. You think that people are gonna eat fruits and vegetables, but most people think that a, a thin little puny pink piece of tomato on your sandwich from McDonald's or Wendy's is a vitamin a, C. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that they're eating whole foods. They are not. So we, we need to strive for five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. That's a half a cup to make sure that we're getting all of the antioxidants that God put in those to keep our body healthy. Right. To do that. The next is omega-3s, good fats. 
Mm -hmm. um, we eat so many bad fats as a ratio of the omega-6s, which are the bad fats, to the good fats, but we don't eat enough of the good fats. And that's fish oil, that's avocados, that's grass-fed beef, um, that's making sure you eat your fish, um, it's olive oil, it's good things that will help. And your heart needs that, and most particularly your brain. More and more studies are showing that dementia and Alzheimer's are directly correlated to having not enough fat, good fats wow. in your body. And the final one is we've talked about is antioxidants. You have to eat the colors of the rainbow. And the more variety of foods you get, I believe there's over a hundred different kinds of antioxidants that our body needs, and each one's specific. The cabbage family helps stop cancer growth. So you, know, you need to make sure you're eating different kinds of antioxidants, and you only can do that if you eat different colors of foods. Oh, the rainbow. Yes. All right. I'm going to stop you right there, and we are going to um, continue our conversation in the weeks ahead because we have C and D to get to yet. So we will be back with you, and I'm going to turn it back to you in the studio. I always love that knowledge and information from Dr. Trudy, and the fact that she considers her medical business a ministry is, mm -hmm. is really a neat thing. Mm -hmm. We'll have parts C and D for you next week on Faith and Friends. And don't forget, you can rewatch this segment anytime at WTLW.com. You can also post it to your Facebook page or email the link to your friends so that others can also gain from this knowledge. Well, speaking of knowledge, have you guys seen this? Absolutely. I saw it about two hours ago. You saw it about two hours ago. <laughs> we'll look at it again. Maybe you want to read it. It's a wonderful it. cover. Dr. Trudy is the author of this brand new book, Prevention is the Cure to Cancer. Five easy steps. And you know what, guys? Look, it's only, it is literally only 57 pages of reading. No, okay, take that back. 60, 67 pages of reading. So it's a pamphlet. It is an incredibly knowledgeable, full of information, big, thick but pamphlet it, with lots it, of things. In all honesty, it is very easily readable. It's very easily digestible. It's just some really practical advice that we can all do, that we can all take some steps to prevent cancer. Can I skip ahead to the end? Uh, Figure out how it all turns out? The end is you live longer. <laughs>